Shalom, Yasha Allah. This is Brother Mapathak. That'd be key, but in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. And um, this is going to be a quick video just dealing with um, the topic of being beware uh, of men, you know, and being uh, prudent and using uh, the discernment that the Lord uh, granted unto you, you know, being circumspect when dealing with brothers, man, you know. And it's truth. You you can't you can't come into this truth, and now you just lose all the um the street the street smarts the so called street smarts that you gain, man. You know when you were uh, in the road and you were dealing with brothers and you learned the different traits and, and ways of brothers. You know, you can't just lose all that when you come into this truth and become a gullible man. Now now brothers can uh do all matters of folly and you just like man he got on fringes he it's all good he got on fringes that's that's my guy. You know, now you think everything is, is just, oh, it's all love. Even though it's all love, you know, because we can manage to love one another. But you can't be a damn fool, man. You know, you can't be gullible because this thing is more important than anything that you had going on in the world. Right in the world, you may have had, just for example, you know, you may have had like a little uh, circle of guys that you probably made money with. However you did it, selling drugs, whatever it may be. And this is an example. You might see this in movies, whatever. You know, you had that one guy that's kind of moving kind of shaky, man. You know, he's causing division amongst the brethren. Uh, he, he's, he's being grimy and, and shysty with the, with the money, you know. He kind of holding out. And that, hey, that brother, you got to, that's, that's the brother you get, kind of get rid of and you stay away from that brother. And it's no different in the truth, man. You have to still be um, circumspect in this truth. You know, you have to still be a, an, an observer in this truth. That's why the scriptures tell you. To be more uh, uh, slow to speak and swift to hear, roughly paraphrasing. Because when you're hearing and you're observing, you're paying attention, man. You're paying attention to the to words people are saying. You know, to the intentions behind the words that they're saying. You know, you have to just be uh, circumspect in this thing, man. And before we go into it, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakadash. And I want to give double honor to the elders of Great Millstone who taught us this truth through the, uh, through the Holy Spirit. And salutations to the, um, the mighty brothers on the four corners of the earth that's prophesying, you know, and, and teaching the true gospel. And uh, I'm gonna start. This, I'm gonna start this off with um, Matthew the tenth chapter, in um, verse seventeen. Uh, oh, this is this is fire! I didn't even know this was in here, right? But I'm gonna read it in the KJV first. It says, and this is Yahweh Shai speaking, man. You know, I'm gonna start from sixteen. It says, "Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves." So the Lord is elect that He sends out there. He sends them forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. You know, so anybody who's not part of the election, they're all wolves to the sheep. You know, they're all wolves. It doesn't matter if it's Jake, Esau, Moab. If they're not part of this, this election, you know, they're, 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 they're wolves to us, man. You know, they're, they're out to get us. You have to understand this. We have enemies amongst our own people. When you read throughout the gospel, who were the people that were, um, that were so heen on, on killing Yahawashai? In Luke, the fourth chapter, it tells you it was the Jews that wanted to throw him down headlong off a cliff. You know, when you go into the count of his crucifixion, who are the ones yelling at um, uh, Pilate to damn crucify him? Man, it was our own people. You see, when you go into Acts and you see Peter and the apostles getting getting damn uh, persecuted, who was it that was getting them persecuted? It was our own people, man. You know? So you have to understand that it's, it's, we have enemies amongst our own people. It's wolves amongst our own people, man. You see? And this thing is, is like, I don't really want to liken the brotherhood or the ministry of the Lord unto a gang, but I'm just trying to have you see it on a carnal level. You know, and, and the gang brothers have to be, uh, they have to be observing. They have to be, um, use their discernment and be wise about who they let amongst them. You know? Um, and so, like, I, I should say the mob, right? When you think of like a, a mob or a mafia, these guys were they were wise, but they, they were wicked, you know, but they were they were wise, man. And the mafia don't play with traitors or they don't play with people who uh who come against them, man. You know, so I'm gonna read this again. Verse 16. The point is that we have enemies amongst our own people It's wolves amongst our own people, man. So this is Matthew 10 and 16. It says, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And you have to be wise as a serpent and harmless as doves, man. So 
Because we don't want to have to um, bring harm upon anybody. You don't want to have to physically harm someone. You know, Yahweh Shai doesn't want us to move like that. You don't see an account where Yahweh Shai is just every time somebody is murmuring at him or, or so on and so forth that he, he's ready to fight him, man. You know, that's not in there. So you have to move yourself wisely. It, it was times when people wanted to grab Yahweh Shai up and kill him. And Yahweh Shai kind of had to get up out of there, man. He had to play the cut, so to say. You know? So you want to be wise as a serpent. Before you even have to put yourself in a situation to have to harm someone, you use your wisdom. You know? You have to be wise. You have to be cautious. You have to be prudent. Proverbs, the 22nd chapter, the third verse, it tells you a prudent man foreseeth the evil and, and hideth himself, man. You know? So I'm going to read on. It says, verse 17. It says, but beware of men. So you have to beware of men. And it goes back to what I was saying when I brought this lesson in. Don't just come into this truth and think, okay, we all know the truth. Now everything is all good. No. You know, this guy knows he's an Israelite. Now everything is all good. No. You have to still beware of that brother, man. You have to still watch that brother. Pay attention to that brother, the, the things that brother says, his actions, his fruits. You think Yahweh Shai wasn't paying attention to men's fruits? Yahweh Shai literally told us, you should know them by their fruits. And how would you know a man fruits? You have to pay attention to his works. You have to pay attention to that man. You know, you have to observe that man. You see? You have to observe him. That's how you're going to know a man's fruits. That's how you're going to know a man's intentions. Because the scriptures tell you a man doesn't have power to tame the tongue. You know? So you might, a brother might slip up and say something. You're like, damn, that was, that was kind of off, man. What's on that brother's mind? You know? Because a, a man doesn't have power to tame the tongue, man. You know, and in Syrac, let me see if I can find it. Um, I don't want to paraphrase it too bad. I believe it's in Syrac, the 20th chapter. Um, bear with me. Con, this is what I want. This is uh, Syrac 20 and 14, 13. It says, a wise man by his words, making himself, making himself beloved. It says, but the graces of fools shall be poured out. You see that? Because he can't tame the tongue. So a foolish man, he's going to pour out something that's going to show his true attentions or going to show whether he's righteous or whether he's wicked, you know, uh, and so on and so forth. But it's another one I'm looking for where it goes into like um, the trial of a man is from the words of his mouth, roughly paraphrasing. Right. And that's a beautiful uh, scripture. Let me see. Bear with me. I, I want to find this. Uh, Let me see if I can uh, Google it. Oh, don't tell me I'm not going to be able to find this, man. Con, this is exactly what I want. So it's in Syrac, the 27th chapter. Now check this out. And this all goes into be, be, uh, be, uh, beware, you know? This is uh, Syrac 27 and verse 7. It says, uh... Praise no man before thou hearest him speak. You see? So you praise no man before you hear him speak. Pay attention to what brothers are saying, man. That's a that's in, super important. Because like I said before, you know, if you, if you uh, heard my, any of my lessons, you know I like to reiterate points to kind of make that point plain. Right? So like I said before, um, a man it, it, a man can't tame his tongue. That's in, that's in the book of James. You can't, a man cannot tame his tongue, man. You know, so you want to pay attention to what brothers are saying, what sisters are saying, you know? And that's why, once again, going back to the book of James, be more swift to hear than you are to speak, roughly paraphrasing, man. Pay attention to what, what's, what's being said, you know? So, Syrac 27 and verse 7, it says, Praise no man before thou hearest him speak. It says, For this is the trial of men. So, that's the trial of men. That's how you put a man on trial and you know what type of man you're dealing with, you know, by paying attention to the words that come out of his mouth, man. You know, because a brother can say something, and you know, that he's proud. A brother can, uh, can say something, and you know, that he's uh, he's envious of you. You know, a brother can say something, and you can know that he that he hates you. A brother can say something, and you, you can you can perceive like, OK, this brother um, uh, loves me, man. You know, or this brother is sincere or this brother is wise. You see what I'm saying? You can know a lot just by listening to somebody speak. So it all goes back to what Yahweh Shai said. Beware of men. 
So going back to Matthew 10 and verse 17, it says, but beware of men for they will deliver you up to the councils. Wait, I'm, I'm going to read on, right? It says, and they will scourge you in the synagogues. And hey, you can have men that can come amongst you and they can wear fringes. But in the last days, these going to be the same men that's going to deliver you up, man. You know, that's going to kind of rip their fringes off, shave their beard and be like, yeah, that's that's where those Israelites live. You know, or that's where they go teach. Or, yeah, they they, they do be saying that the, uh, the so-called white man is the devil. You know, I never agreed with that. That's why I left. You know, and they kind of deliver you up, man. You know, so you can have uh, wolves come amongst the, the, the flock, man. You know, and, and do more harm and, and do all harm and no good, man. You know, they can, they can be that um, a bad example to, the, to other brothers in the, in the flock. You see? So you have to beware of men. And I want to read this in the, um, we have the NIV here as well. Matthew 10 to 17 in the NIV. And it says, be on your guard. And that's what this whole lesson is about. Still being on guard. So the Lord was telling you not to be gullible. Don't just let your guard down now because you, you, you in the truth and you think all men that come, that wear fringes are righteous. Don't just let your guard down now, man. You know, the scriptures say, be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and, and be flogged in the synagogues, right? But the point is, be on your guard, you know? Use this, use the sermon, man. You see? And I quoted this earlier, but I'm going to get it. Proverbs, the 22nd chapter. So just know, know who you're dealing with, man. You know? As a matter of fact, I'm going uh, to get this first. Because there's nothing more serious than, than the brotherhood that we have. You know, the ministry and the, and the church that we have. You know, that's why you see countless times and, and, and when Paul would tell you, hey, if, if certain brothers in the church is not following these orders, hey, you depart from them brothers, man. You know, stay away from them brothers, man. Don't keep, don't keep company with them. Matter of fact, let me get that, man. Let me get that. Because <clears throat> this thing is serious. You have, hey, when you're dealing with a congregation, you're dealing with a church, you're dealing with the ministry of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, man. You know, and if you let somebody come amongst that church, come amongst that body and and and, and, and scatter the Lord's sheep, man, you're going, you're going to hell off, man. You know, so this second Thessalonians two. And um, I, I want the third chapter. So lock here. Bear with me. Um, Con the second Thessalonians three and verse 11. It says, for we hear this is not what I want. Con, that's what I want. Verse 14. It says, and if any man obey not our word by this epistle. So the, the Paul was saying, if any man don't obey the word by this epistle, the, the order that I set in place. If any man is not obeying the order that's set in place for the churches, man. It says, have no company with them. So Paul was strict and he let the, those in the church know if any man are not keeping the, uh, the in walking uh, orderly. Hey, you have no company with them, man. You know, don't say, well, he still has his fringes on. No, the scriptures say don't have no company with that man. You know, it says that he may be ashamed so that he, so that he may be ashamed. He may feel ashamed like them. These brothers, they, they really they don't deal with me no more. They, they don't respond to my messages. They don't hang with me. They don't call me. You know, you want that brother to feel ashamed because what happens is hey, a brother can can go off and, and depart and, and you could just still hang with him. And now the brother is like. Well, I guess it's all good. The men of the Lord are still, they still hanging with me. I guess it's all good, man. You know, that, that's why, no, that's why Paul set that in order. Hey, don't, don't even keep company with him, man. Let him feel ashamed for what he's doing because he's turning his back on the Lord. In 2nd Edges, the first chapter, it tells you, verse 25 on down, uh, you ain't, when you forsake the Lord, you're not forsaking the Lord for real, for real. You're forsaking yourself, man. When you forsake this truth, you're not forsaking the Lord. You're forsaking yourself, man. You know, so you want brothers to feel ashamed about that. You see, and I keep trying to have you see it on a carnal level as well. Hey, if somebody was in the mafia and they kind of the mafia have certain things in order. Hey, you got to do this. You got to do that. Hey, and, and somebody just up and say, well, F this. I don't I don't I don't agree with this order. You know, I don't agree with with, with the with the mob, with what they what they having us do. And they just think they could depart. It's not going to happen like that, man. You think. The leader of the mafia is going to still be hanging with the with the dev guy who, who separated or any of the members. No, man. And this truth is more important than a, a mafia. And, it, and it's hey, hey, man, this thing is serious, man. You know, you don't want to forget how serious this thing is, man. A lot of a lot of hey, man, a lot of our forefathers died for this for this thing, man. 
You know? They, they die for this thing, man. This thing not a fad. This thing is not nothing to play with, man. You know? And there's going to be a lot of infiltrators that come amongst the flock to try to do harm to us, man. You know? And, and, and we seen we seen the ultimate example with Judas, man. What he did to Yahweh Shai. You know? So when we read these accounts, the scriptures tell us in Romans the 15th chapter. These scriptures are written for our learning, man. That we through patience may have uh may have uh comfort in in, in Salaki. I'm, I'm roughly paraphrasing it, but Romans 15 and 4, man. Scriptures are written for our learning. So we have to understand if a, if a man like that came amongst Judas, the servant, I mean, came amongst Yahweh Shai, a servant is not greater than his master. We're going to deal with infiltrators as well, you know? And with that being said, you have to be on watch. And you have to be like Yahweh Shai said, beware of men. But let's read on in here. I'm actually reading it again from the top. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 14. It says, and if any man obey not our word by this epistle, Note that man and have no company with him, you know, that he may be ashamed. It says, yet count him not as an enemy, right? But don't count him as an enemy. It says, but admonish him um, as a brother. But you're supposed to admonish them as a brother. You know, like, hey, brother, you're making the wrong decision, man. You know, making the wrong decision, brother. We got to, we got to, we got to, uh, Fulfill the will of the Heavenly Father, man. We got to serve and worship the Heavenly Father. Right? And um, let's go to Acts, the 20th chapter. And you see that in Galatians as well, right? Let me get that real quick in Galatians, the 5th chapter. Right? Let me see if I can find it. I ain't really had nothing planned. I'm just kind of going through the Spirit. Really going off a conversation, you know, that made me kind of think of these, uh, think of this lesson. And this is an important lesson, man, especially in the latter days that we live in it. You know, when everybody know about the Israelites, everybody know what we out here prophesying about. And that's why I say it's so serious, because you have to understand we're in the nation and we're when we go out there and prophesy and we speak the things that we're speaking. We're really declaring war against this nation, man. You know, when you say this nation is going to be burnt down, when you say the leaders of this nation are going and in, going into captivity and, and in chains, you're declaring war against the nation, man. This, this thing ain't no damn game. You know, this is serious business, man. You know, that's what you have to understand. So this is a, uh, so you would be a fool to think it's not going to come a day that was prophesied in the scriptures that the, the men of the Lord are, are, are going to be persecuted, man. You know, you, hey, we have examples, man. We see, we see uh, the Black Panthers, you know, we see what they did to, to Martin Luther, to Malcolm X, so on and so forth, man, you know. This ain't no game, man. I believe that's called Cointel Pro, where they were where just to, to make it kind of um, plain. I believe it's Cointel Pro goes into something like um, doing for the government to do all that they can to stop the rise of a, a so-called black messiah, man. You know, to stop the rise of a so-called black man that's going to try to um, do basically what the men of the Lord are going to do, man. You know, bring unity amongst the elect and so on and so forth. I believe that's what Cointel Pro is, so lucky if I'm wrong on that. But uh, yeah, man, it's a whole CIA program um, that that evolves around stopping so the so-called black man from rising up and knowing who they are, man. You know, so this thing is not a game. You think they're not going to set up men to be infiltrators, and um, not even only that. You know, the hey, the Lord, uh, uh really, uh, yeah, it really is the Lord. But hey, Satan is just hopping on brothers trying to trying to stop the uh the work from coming out, man. You know, when you go to uh, Luke, Salaki, I'm kind of jumping around. I didn't even read this yet, but like I said, it's all through the spirit. Um, when you go to Luke, the 22nd chapter, and um, you read, uh, let me see. Bear with me. Um, Con, that's what I want. It's Luke 22 and verse 31. It says, and the Lord said, and this is Yahweh Shai speaking. It says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan have desired to have you. That he may sift you as wheat, you see? So Satan is hopping on brothers to try to sift other brothers out, man. You know, Satan can hop on a brother to kind of do certain things and kind of manipulate certain things and, you know, get in brothers' minds. And next thing you know, that man can cause somebody to uh to, to fall out, man. You know, Satan hopped on, on Peter and tried to tell Yahweh Shai, hey, you don't... Basically, basically, roughly paraphrasing, he basically said, hey, you don't have to fulfill the will of the Heavenly Father. 
You know, and, and Yahweh Shai said, hey, get, be, get, get thee behind me, Satan. Because Peter tried to tell the, uh, the Lord, basically, he doesn't have to die for the, um, for, the, for the nation. You know, but that was the will of the Lord. So, so Yahweh Shai knew, oh, that's, that's Satan, man, trying to stop me from doing what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, so Satan can hop on brothers amongst you and try to uh, damn, and, 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 and damn scatter the flock, man. You know, and the scriptures tell you, be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks, man. You have to protect the flock, man. You know? And um, let me see if I could. Uh, I believe it's the scripture that I'm thinking about. Uh, oh, Khan, exactly. That's the spirit. That's what I was going to go to. Khan. Kyle, like how about some y'all? Let's get that. Um, let's get this in Galatians 5 first. Let me get this first, Salakia. Because that's pretty much where we're going with it. Let's go to Acts the 20th chapter. So this Acts 20 and verse 28, 8. It says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit have made you overseers. And and, 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 and through the Spirit. Hey, if you're in the spirit of Yahweh Shai, that's the spirit you're going to have, man. You're going to care about the state of the flock, man. You're going to be watching out, man. You're going to be aware of men. You know, you're not going to let anybody just come amongst you, man, and scatter the flock. You know, because you're going to understand how serious this thing is. Because you know Yahweh Shai will do the same thing, man. You know, when they came and tried to grab up Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai said, uh, hey, take me, man, but let them do what they're going to do, man. You know, a lot of brothers in that situation, they would have been like, oh, well, well, Mark is hiding under the car and Peter is hiding behind that tree, you know, brothers just start uh, ratting everybody out. But Yahweh Shai said, hey, just take me and let my, hey, let, let my disciples do what they're going to do, man, you know, and that's him being the overseer over his flock, right? So it says, take heed to your, therefore to yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit have made you overseers to feed the church of the heavenly father, which he had purchased with his own blood, man, you know? So you have to you have to take care of the church, man. You have to take care of the flock, you know. And part of taking care of the flock is being where beware of wolves. You see. And let me read this in the NIV. It says, "Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit have made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of the heavenly Father." And what does a shepherd do? A shepherd is constantly watching the sheep. A shepherd is not going to let anything happen to his sheep. At least a good shepherd, you know. And Yahweh Shai is that good shepherd. And we want to be the type of uh, shepherd that Yahweh Shai is, man. So you watching out for spirits. You don't want spirits hopping on your flock. You don't want none of that, man. You, you watching everything. That's what it means to be an overseer. Let's go into that word. Overseer. See what that's going into. The, when you get the etymology of these words, it's good, right? It says... To look down upon, to keep watch over, to survey, to observe. And that's why I said you have to be observing in this thing, man. You have to observe everything. It says to supervise, to superintend, right? You see, you have to supervise, you have to observe. You have to be very observant and, and circumspect and prudent in this thing, man. You know, and then we, we paraphrase Proverbs, the 22nd chapter, where it says um, you have to be uh, a prudent man for see if the evil, right? And when you go into this word prudent, it means wise discerning and that's why a big part of this lesson is discernment right it says judicious right and that, that's that's beautiful right wise it says when you go down here go down a little bit it says to look ahead prepare supply act with foresight man so to look ahead is to 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 pretty much um um predict what could possibly happen in the future if you do if you um allow certain things man you know for example um, we know that we know the prophecies, you know, we know that famine is coming, so on and so forth. So a prudent man foreseeing that evil, what, we, what he would try to do is collect food like we see Joseph do um, in, a, in a famine in Egypt. You know, he started collecting corn. That's that's prudence, you know. So you have to be prudent in this thing as a shepherd. Right. So when we go back to uh, Acts, the 20th chapter, let's read verse 29. It says, for I know this, that after my departure, after my departing, so grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. You see, grievous wolves shall enter in among you, not sparing the flock. And Yahweh Shai warned us and, and the apostles warned us, you know, in multiple epistles to beware of men, you know, beware of false prophets and so on and so forth, man. 
You know, beware of these wolves that could possibly come in among you and scatter the flock. You know, it says, for I know this, that after my departure, shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. You see, it says also of your own selves. This is deep. It says also. Let me read this in the NIV, right? It says even from your own number men, you know, so saying even from the men that's amongst you, man. You know, will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them, man. So, yo, man, that's deep. It says, so even men, hey, men may come among you and want to join your camp. But what they do is be like, oh, no, nah, what you're teaching is wrong. They, 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 you're teaching the truth, but they start distorting it. No, nah, this is really what that's talking about. No, nah, I don't think that's what they're saying. I don't, you know, and now... What, what happens is they can deceive They can deceive brothers that's in the camp Now brothers in the camp is like Oh, I, I kind of agree with what he's saying Yeah, that makes, that makes more sense But they distort in the truth, man You know, it says So arise and distort the truth In order to draw away disciples after them, man In order to draw away disciples after them, man You know, come on, man You can't get around this, man You know Let's go to Galatians, the fifth chapter I believe that's what I want. It's um somewhere where Paul was telling them. Um, let me see. This whole chapter pretty much goes into it, though, to be honest. But I don't want to read the whole chapter. Um, so lock your bill with me. Come, on, I'm gonna start from here. Galatians five and seven. It says, "Ye did run well." Right. So Paul was telling the Galatians, you were doing well. You know, you were you were following the truth. Well, you, you had everything going good. It says, who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? But who amongst you came to you and kind of deceived you that you shouldn't obey the truth or continue moving how you were already moving? You were doing good. Who was it that hindered you, man? You know, it says this persuasion come if not of him that calleth you. He said it wasn't the heavenly father. You know, it says a little leaven. Leaven if the whole lump. And that's why you don't want a little leaven amongst the lump, man. Amongst the um the congregation, amongst the brotherhood, man. Because all it takes is a, a little leaven. And, and just with that understanding, that's why you have to be super circumspect, man. You know, you have to always be observing. Because all it takes is a little leaven. The guy doesn't have to be super wicked to come in and infiltrate and kind of um cause confusion. All it takes is a little leaven, man. Just a little bit. It says... I have confidence in you through the Lord that you, you will be no none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. So Paul said, whoever it was that kind of hindered the truth, he's going to he's going to be judged for that, man. You know, the Lord is going to deal with that, man. You know, and um, reading on, it says, and I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I why do I yet per, why do I suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross uh, ceased. Right, because you had these men that were trying to uh, uh, force circumcision on men, you know, and they were trying to uh, circle. I mean, they were trying to uh, persecute Paul because they were trying to say Paul was teaching contrary. But even though Paul was actually teaching the law, you know, right. But verse 12, it says, I would I would they were even cut off, which trouble you. Right. And Paul said, man, I wish those damn infiltrators, man, you know, these damn wolves were cut off, man, you know. But it's um I'm looking for some something, something else in this chapter. Let me see. Let me type in it. Liberty. In Galatians. Bear with me. Con, it wasn't a uh, con, it wasn't here. No, that's not what I want. It's it's somewhere where he says they got men that try to spy out our get it. This is what I want. It's Galatians second the second chapter. So it's Galatians two and verse four. It says, and that because of false brethren unawares brought in. Oh my God, bro. I'm, I'm, so lucky. I'm getting a little excited, man. You know, I'm getting a little excited. Let me read this in the NIV because it's, it's, it's going into exactly what I was saying, man. You know, uh, uh, verse four, uh, Galatians two and four in the NIV. I'm, I'm, I'm getting real excited, man. Kahala Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shad. You know, because the scriptures back up everything I'm saying, man. This is the truth. You know, so the Galatians two and four in the, in the NIV, it says, This matter arose because some false believers. You see that some false believers. So brothers could come amongst you with fringes on, you know, and growing a beard. But these guys could be false believers, man. They don't really believe in the truth. You know, 
It says this matter arose because some false believers had infiltrated our ranks to spy on the freedom that we have in Yahweh Shai and to make us slaves. Because you had men amongst the Galatians that were trying to bind them under the law and basically tell them they, if they didn't hold up the standard of the whole law that they couldn't be saved. You know, and Paul likened these men unto infiltrators. Anybody that comes amongst the brotherhood and try to uh, hinder the truth, these guys are infiltrators, man. You know, it doesn't even have to be as deep as these brothers trying to get you persecuted and deliver you up, man. Even though that's part of it. But these guys just hindering the truth, man. You know, and, and, and coming amongst the flock and scattering the flock and causing division amongst the flock. These guys are infiltrators, man. You know, let's go into that word infiltrators in the, uh, in the etymology. Yeah, that was, that was the spirit right there, man. I, I didn't even read that, uh, that, that translation. Right, so it says... To uh, penetrate enemy lines, Salakia. Let me kind of, uh, I'm going to Google it. Infiltrate. It says enter or gain access to an organization or place, etc. Right? So, uh, surreptitiously and gradually, especially in order to acquire secret information. You know, coming amongst the brotherhood with their own agenda. You know? It says... Virtually no water infiltrator, uh, calm. But that's pretty much what being an infiltrator goes into. You just coming in, p pretending to be <coughs> in something, but really you just in there for your own reasons, man. <coughs> you know? And um, go back to the scriptures. Right, so as you can see, I'm going to read that again. Galatians 2 and 4 in the NIV. This matter arose because of some false believers had infiltrated our ranks to spy on the freedom we have in Yahweh Shai and to make us slaves, man. So it's going to be infiltrators that come among you. You know, Paul constantly talks about false brethren. You know, false brethren unawares. And um, did I say I was going to go somewhere else? I kind of don't remember. kind of don't remember, man. You know? But yeah, you got to watch out for that. Brothers that hinder the truth. Brothers that's causing division with doctrine. And so on and so forth, man. The scriptures tell you um, to warn a brother uh, once, then twice. You know, a brother that's trying to cause division. If that brother is still not getting down with, with the order that's established... Hey, hey, reject that brother, man. You know, stay away from that brother. That's 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 what Paul said in Titus, the third chapter. Um, and these are all hey, Paul left us um, advice on how to deal with the church, man. And we got to follow that advice, man. You know, and um, Salaki, I'll, there's another scripture I wanted to give before I closed out. Con, this is what I want. Uh, Malachi, third chapter in the last verse, right? It's Malachi 3 and 18. It says... I'm going to read it in the uh, NIV. It says, and you will, I'm reading in both, but I'm reading in NIV first. It says, and you will again see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve the heavenly father and those who do not. Right. I'm going to read it in the KJV. Right. It goes into discernment. It says, then shall you return. Right. And discern between the righteous and the wicked. You know, so the men of the Lord, they're going to have the spirit of discernment. You know, you're going to be able to discern between someone who really serves the heavenly father and someone who's just um, faking the funk, man. You know, it says between him that serveth the heavenly father and him that serveth him not. That's plain. You know, you're going to be able to discern between a man that serves the heavenly father and a man that actually doesn't. And you need that discernment when you're dealing with a congregation, man. You know, you got to you got to you got to really protect the flock in this thing, man. You know, because the Holy Spirit has made us overseers of the flock. You see? Um, and Lord willing, this is edifying. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakadash. You know, just make sure uh, you 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 proving brothers in this thing, man. You know, make sure you're being observant. You know, make sure you're using the spread of the discernment. You know, this Iraq, the sixth chapter, it tells us to prove a friend, man. You know, the scriptures tell us a man can can be a friend for his own occasion. So you just have to you just have to be aware, man. That's that's the that's what I really that's what I started off this lesson with. Just be aware of men, like Yahweh Shai said. And with that, Lord willing, this is edifying. Shalom.